Today I'm going to answer a question by a student by the name of Stephen Boyd, actually two questions. His questions have to do with the series of videos on building a linear power supply. And the question relates to the regulator, which I have drawn up here, and we'll talk very quickly about what the regulator does and then zero in on his questions. I've left the part of the circuit out that has the transformer, the rectifier, and the filter because we're going to look at the regulator. So there is a transformer out there that steps the voltage down from the mains to a more reasonable voltage. Then we have the rectifier, which turns this into a pulsating DC, and then a filter that filters that out to a flat DC. And in this particular circuit, we end up with about 20 volts. We want 10 volts across our load, which represents the circuit that the power supply is powering. And so we have about a 10 volt overhead to work with. And here we have the main part of the regulator, which is an operational amplifier. If you haven't seen the video on operational amplifiers yet, just very quickly, an operational amplifier has two inputs and one output, and the circuit monitors the two inputs and changes the output to whatever it takes to make the two inputs equal. I'll mention that a little more in just a moment. And over here we have a Zener diode, which is a device that if it's set up properly will have a constant voltage across it. So we have a 10 volt Zener diode, which gives us a constant 10 volts here. The operational amplifier is also looking at the output of the regulator, and it's going to make this voltage whatever it takes to keep this voltage equal to that voltage. That voltage is 10 volt Zener diode there, so that's going to be plus 10 volts. And we see that there's also plus 10 volts over here, so that comes back to the inverting input of the amplifier and so this voltage is going to be whatever it takes to make sure that that voltage stays the same as that voltage because now we have 10 volts on both inputs. So we have it all balanced out and it's working and as long as it stays within reason nothing tries to go beyond voltage that we don't have. For example if this tries to go above 20 volts well I don't have more than 20 volts to work with so that's not going to work. But as long as it stays within what the circuit is able to do this voltage will be whatever it takes to keep that voltage at 10 volts. So there is a regulator for a 10 volt power supply coming off of uh, 20 volts from the transformer and rectifier and filter. So Mr. Boyd was looking at this circuit and he saw what we have here. So what do we have? 10 volts and some load. Let's say our load is one amp. So 10 volts, 1 amp, that means that this load, the circuit that it's powering, is acting like about a 10 ohm resistor, or exactly like a 10 ohm resistor. So the transistor, well, we have 10 volts here and 20 volts there. So we have a drop of 10 volts across the transistor. So there's 10 volts from here to here, 10 volts from there to there. There's one amp going here. Where's that amp coming from? Well, there's no appreciable current flowing here. So that one amp has to be coming through the transistor. So we have 10 volts and one amp. Ohm's law says 10 volts, one amp. We divide our current into our voltage. That gives us a resistance, doesn't it? That's looking like a 10 ohm resistor. And Mr. Boyd's question is, he said that I thought that a transistor was either on or off. It was like a switch. But here it looks like a resistor that's being controlled by the base. And, well, this transistor is acting like a resistor that's controlled at the base. You've got it exactly right there. If someone told you that transistors are simply a switch, they misled you because, yes, I can use this as a switch. If I put it all the way into saturation, which means I have raised this voltage to the point where raising it anymore will not increase the current, it's fully on, it looks like a closed switch. If I reduce this voltage to the point where reducing it no longer reduces the current, I've put it in a condition called cutoff. Basically, it's an open switch. So yes, transistors are used as switches all the time by putting them all the way into saturation or all the way into cutoff and never working them in between. But here we are working the transistor in between those points. And so what's this voltage here? I don't really know. Uh, you might say, well, isn't that 0.7 volts from here? Isn't there 0.7 volts from the base to the emitter? Well, that's somewhat of a myth. There's usually 7 tenths of a volt from the base to the emitter, but it depends on what the state of the transistor is. If it's in saturation, it could be 
0.8 volts, 0.9. There are, are some transistors, power transistors, I have seen specified as much as 7 volts between the base and the emitter when it's in saturation. So this voltage could be anything, whatever it takes. And so if that was 7 tenths of a volt, of course, this would be 10.7 volts here, positive 10.7. And if we start drawing more current, it's going to take more voltage. And who knows, if this is a power transistor, we might need 1.5 volts there. But what happened to the 7 tenths of a volt? It could be much higher. It depends on the transistor. So don't get stuck in your head that that has to be 7 tenths of a volt. So here we would have 11.5 volts here. And I don't really much care because this is going to make it whatever it takes to balance the circuit out. So I don't worry about it. I don't even think about it. So let's just get rid of that. So there's how the circuit works. Uh, just to see how the controlling works, let's say that this is something like a transceiver. So it's a radio that both receives and transmits. Right now it's in receive mode, so it's taking one amp. Now I'm going to go into transmit mode. I key the button on the microphone. That puts it in transmit mode. Now it needs more power, so let's say that jumps up to two amps. So the current doubled, that means that the resistance that the load is presenting to the circuit has dropped to 5 ohms. And of course, this is going to try to drop in voltage. I'm not going to do the numbers. Uh, it's going to come down to what? Try to go up down to about 7 volts, but I'm not going to calculate that out. I'm just going to show what it does because as soon as this voltage drops, that means this voltage here drops. The op amp senses that, kicks this voltage up, brings that back up until it's back at 10 volts. So we have 10 volts and 5 ohms here. That means that this had to drop down to 5 ohms also. So, yes, it's a variable resistor controlled by the base. Let's take a look at my little green man model of a transistor. This is based on the hybrid model, and so let's take a look at what it is. We have a current meter here, another current meter here, and a variable resistor, and there's our ground. This is the base, this is the collector, this is the emitter. That's going to be a variable resistor. And inside this transistor is a little green man. And he's got his head on a swivel because he's watching both of these current meters and he's got his hand on that variable resistor. And he has a plaque on the wall that tells him what he's supposed to do. And that plaque says HF. E equals 10. HFE is the hybrid parameter forward biased common emitter circuit and the HFE tells us the ratio of base current to collector current. So what this says is if I put in 1 milliamp on the base I'm going to get 10 milliamps on the collector. So that means I have a base to emitter current ratio of 10. And of course, then if I double this to 2 milliamps, this is going to double to 20 milliamps. So that's what the circuit does. So how does it work? Well, we have our little green man in there who's watching these current meters, and he sees 1 milliamp here. He adjusts this resistance until he sees 10 milliamps there. Now, what's the voltage here? I don't know. There, I don't know. We just assume that those voltages are such that the circuit will work. And so, and also there's an input here which gives us a certain amount of current. So we just assume that those are working. So we get one milliamp here. He adjusts that resistance until he sees 10 milliamps. If this increases to two milliamps, he cranks that resistor down in resistance until he sees 20 milliamps. And so that's the little green man model of the transistor. And lo and behold, what is it? It's a variable resistor that he adjusts to keep this current whatever this says it should be above that current. So here we have an HFE of 10. We could have more, could have less, but that's what we have for this particular transistor. So yes, a transistor is a variable resistor controlled by the base. Now let's go back to our circuit and answer the other half of your question, which has to do with the fact, well, this is a resistor, so it's going to act like a resistor, right? So let's put our 
transistor back here, put in our load. And over here we have our regulator. We know it's working. I'm not going to put any more information there. This is going to be plus 20 volts. This is going to be plus 10 volts. And the regulator is going to be watching that and making sure that that stays at 10 volts. So let's just erase this just to eliminate the clutter. And so let's say under these conditions, let's see right now, let's say we have our one amp. 10 volts, 1 amp, that means this looks like a 10 ohm resistor. And this also looks like, lo and behold, a 10 ohm resistor. We already determined that. And what voltage is across it? Well, we know we're going to have a voltage drop. If you have current flowing through a resistor, there's our current 1 amp. There's no current flowing here, so it's a series circuit. And so we have 10 ohms in series with 10 ohms, 10 volts here. What's the voltage going to be here? Well, there it is. 20 volts, 10 volts, we're going to lose 10 volts. So we have 10 volts and 10 ohms and one amp. What power is it dissipating? Well, E times I, 10 volts times one amp gives us 10 watts. That's dissipating quite a bit of power there. That's gonna blister your finger if you touch it. That's why Transistors are often mounted on big heat sinks to get rid of the heat. You might even have to blow a fan on it to get rid of the heat. That's also why this particular design of a power supply is not a particularly good design. I have a series. I'm building this because it's a good circuit to learn when you've just learned all of the components and all of the rules. How do we put those together into a useful circuit? So it's just like one of each component. We have a transformer, a rectifier, a capacitor, a Zener diode, a resistor, a operational amplifier, although we can get by without that, but you will see if you watch the series, but one transistor and then a load. One component, each stringing onto the other to make a useful circuit. So it's a very useful circuit to learn as an exercise in how components go together. And if you don't have a lot of current, it's a useful circuit to regulate voltage. But as soon as you need any kind of current, you're going to get too much heat off of this transistor to be useful. Yes, they do make linear power supplies. I have a couple of them and they start out with a huge transformer because we first have to step down our voltage to something reasonable. We have 20 volts here. What if we put in the mains voltage? Let's just say it's 100 volts. Okay, now what's happening here? 10 volts, 100 volts, now this is 90 volts, and now we are dissipating 90 watts, holy cow. So we've got to get that voltage down. So we get a big chunk of iron with copper wrapped around it called a transformer, step that down to something more reasonable, and get that down to 20 volts in this particular case. And then we still have, now we're back to 10 volts and 10 watts, but that's still, that's still a lot of heat to get rid of. So now we have that big aluminum heat sink to get rid of the heat. So when you're dealing with a lot of current, a linear power supply is probably not your best choice. We would use a switching power supply, in which case we do use this as a switch. We're going to take that transistor, we're going to switch it all the way on, put it into saturation, which means it looks like a closed switch. So how much resistance does it have? essentially zero ohms. So how much power is it dissipating? Well, uh, I squared R, so two times one is two times zero is zero, no power. So when it's fully on, there's no power. But then again, we've got our full 20 volts out here. But we'll deal with that in a moment. Now we switch it off. We do this a thousand times, 10,000 times a second, depending on the supply. So we, we switch it off. Now this is a open circuit and we've got our full 10 volts across there, but there's zero current because it's now an open circuit. So 10 volts, zero amps, 10 times zero is zero, so it's still no power dissipating, and, but of course this is now zero volts. So this voltage is going 20 volts, zero volts, 20 volts, zero volts, a thousand times a second. So we need to put a filter out here, but then we have a regular nice steady voltage over here. So that's the idea of a switching power supply. Turn the transistor all the way on and all the way off. So it's always either a short circuit or an open circuit. So it's not dissipating much heat. And then it makes a practical power supply. So if you go and 
pick up a power supply and it's pretty small and you look, hmm, 12 volts, one amp. And it's very tiny and very lightweight. You can bet it's a switching power supply. But if you pick up another power supply and it's fairly big and fairly heavy and it says the same rating, 12 volts, one amp, hmm, you probably have a linear power supply. A little unusual, but they do make them. So switching power supply is probably better. But that brings us back to the question, this transistor, if it's got resistance and current, it's going to dissipate power, isn't it? You betcha. So that's yes to both of your questions. Question number one, is that transistor acting like a variable resistor controlled at the base? Yes, it is. Is that transistor dissipating heat because it's basically got voltage and current? Yes, it is. It's acting like a resistor. So yes to both questions. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.